In this presentation, we are going to take a look at how to test a hypothesis when you are being asked to compare variations within your data set. Variation is an important concept in statistics in that it helps you to understand if the values that you are looking at are consistent or have wider variations. Now, in this example, we have sales data for 2019 being compared to sales data in 2020. The comparison is going to be made on the basis of variations. That is to say whether the variations in 2019 sales data is significantly different from the variations in 2020 sales data. So that is the purpose of this particular question. We are not looking at comparing the differences in the average or the mean. Instead, we are looking at comparing variations or differences in the variance or their vari variability. Now, to conduct this, we need to come out with the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is, will be stated as follows. The sales variations in 2019 and 2020 are not significantly different. So what that means is they are essentially the same or statistically speaking, they are the same. The alternative hypothesis will go the other way, which will mean that the sales variation in 2019 and 2020 are significantly different. That means they are not the same and they are not equal. So there's significant variation between the two sales data for the two years. Now having stated the null hypothesis, now we're going to move on to question B, where we have to justify which method that we should use to test for differences in variations or variances. Now, because we are dealing with variations, the method, the right method to use is going to be the F-test, because the F-test is used when we are being asked to explore differences between two variances. Question C asked that we determined the tail test. For F test, we can only speak of one type of tail, which is the right one tail test. This is because the F test is right skewed. And with a right skewed means that you only have a one tail to the right. So the F test only utilizes the right one tail test. Question D and E requires that we've established the critical value and find the test value. To do this, this is where we require Excel to do the calculations for us. But before we have to do this and go, before I demonstrate this to you, we need to know which of these sales data has the greater standard deviation which one has the higher standard deviation. The reason that we need to know about this is this. The data with the higher standard deviation or the greater standard deviation will have to be the numerator and the one that is with the lower standard deviation will be the denominator. Or the one with the higher standard deviation will have to be your first sample, sample one and the one with the lower standard deviation will have to be your second sample, sample two. We need to come out, make that decision. So that will basically help us in completing our Excel presentation. So to figure out the standard deviation for each of these data set, we are going to use a syntax or a function in Excel. And that syntax is 
to do that, we, you, you type in the equal sign inside the cell below the 2019 sales data. And the function is STDEV. That represents standard deviation, STDEV. Then you begin with the bracket and, and select the data, the values, only the values, and then close the bracket. So we have the equal sign STDE, STDEV bracket opens, we select the data, then we close the bracket. And then we, end, we click on the enter key. And when you enter, you can see that a standard deviation is given. Now we have to do the same for the 2020 data. So the equal STDEV bracket open, select the data, bracket closed. Enter. Now you notice that the sales in 2020 has the higher or the greater standard deviation than the sales in 2019. So for that reason, our 2020 sales data will be our first sample and then our second sample will be the 2019 sales data. So with that knowledge, we go to Excel to compute for the text value and the critical value. To do this, we go to Data, Data Analysis, select F test for sample, for two sample for variance, so F test two sample for variance. And then for variable one, this is your sample one, you select the data that fit into variable one. And that data is going to be the one with the greater standard deviation. So as the cursor blinks in the box, you go ahead and select the 2020 sales data, which represent the one with the greater standard deviation value. And then for variable two, which represent your second sample, we select the 2019 data set, and that should get you your data for the second sample. And then we check on the labels, make sure the labels is checked because we included the labels on top here in our selection. And then the alpha is going to be 5% because the question asks for at 5% significance level, which is our alpha. And then we then decide on the output range where we want to place the output. So as the cursor blinks in that output box, you select any of the blank spot here and click on that empty blank spot. And that is the location where Excel will display the results. And as you've done this, you just have to, we've done, so we just have to click on OK and say OK. And the results is here. So I'm just going to spread them out a little bit. Just hold the key and then the mouse and then just spread it out so that you can see clearly what the values are. So these are the two variances that are being compared. We are comparing the variance for 2020 sales with the variance for 2019 sales. So we want to figure out if these variances are significantly different. Now we have 20 observations and a degree of freedom is n minus 1 for each one of them. So n 20 minus 1 gave you a degree of freedom of 19 for 2020 sales and the same goes with um, 2019 sales as well. Now this is the F test value 
0.278325. Now, this is quite a long um, decimal, have many decimals places, so we need to reduce this to possible three decimal places. And the way to do that is to select the data, click on the data, and this function here gets you to reduce, decrease the decimal places. So when you click on that, keep as you keep clicking on that, the decimal places keep reducing. Right? We decrease we have de we have decreased this to three decimal places. So that's your F value. So and then the next is your P value. So the P value is 0 0.34738. So again I'm going to use the decimal, the decrease the decimal function to reduce this to roughly three decimal places. And then this value refers to the F critical one tail. So this is your critical value. Again, we reduce that to three decimal places. So that's basically what these values represent. So let's begin with the critical value. So our establish the critical value so we can say that the critical value is 2.168. find the test value. The test value is given as your F. So that should be 1.2000. And then we have to make the decision. Since the critical value and it, by comparing the critical value and the test value, we can come to the conclusion as to whether to reject the null or to accept it. Now, as you can see, the test value is less than the critical value. In that case, we have to accept the null hypothesis. We, have, we should not reject the null but rather we have to accept it. So in that case our conclusion will be that the null hypothesis should be accepted. So since the F test value of 1.200 is less than the critical F value of 2.168 the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. Hence we can validate the null hypothesis to be true. So we conclude that the sales variations in 2019 and 2020 are not statistically significant. So the differences are not statistically significant. The null in this case is a valid statement. So in that case, the sales variation in 2019 and 2020 are not significantly different. They are essentially the same. They are not significantly different. Now, let's take a look at interpretation for the F value. The F value is 0 0.347. Over here we have to multiply by 100 to have it in a percentage. So by so doing we came up with the F test value of 1.200 has a P value of 0 0.3474. When you multiply this by 100, you transform it into a percentage, which becomes 34.74. Since the p-value of 34.4% is more than the significant level of 5%, this shows that we have a weak evidence against 
the null hypothesis, hence the null hypothesis, hypothesis should be accepted. Does the likelihood of incurring an error in our decision when we reject the null hypothesis is going to be 34.47%. This is, in fact, exceeds the maximum tolerance limit of 5%. And in that case, that explains why the null hypothesis should not be rejected. If we reject it, we may incur more error of 34.7%, which is more than the limit imposed as 5%. So this is essentially how to test a hypothesis involving um, F-test for exploring the significant differences in variances. Now, the outcome of this decision will help you determine what type of T-test you require to perform in your next question, question 5. Because in question 5, you'll be asked to perform a T-test to figure out if there is a significant difference in the average between the two data. Because the variance is here is assumed to be the same and no significant difference between the two variances, that means that in our next question, when we are asked to conduct a t-test, we may have to choose t-test assuming equal variance because the variance here the results here indicate that our variances are equal, no significant difference. So we may have to choose a t-test assuming equal variances. If we should have our conclusion happen to be significantly different, then we will have the option to choose not equal variances. But in this case, we have to, for purposes of our next question, we will have to select t-test assuming equal variances.